Hi, this is Miss Andrea, and I'm here at the Fort Bend Discovery Center, and I'm going to do a project with you guys today that is, I really like it a lot. It's a recycle project um, using recycled tin cans. Do you know it's not really tin, it's steel. And do you know that the cans have not been around very long? It's, it's not been very, very long. I mean, really, when you think about it, um, a lot of use is made out of cans. People they take them long distances and really changed a lot of things. You know how it came about? It's pretty cool. Napoleon Bonaparte was a French emperor, military uh, leader, and he decided that his troops, whenever they went to invade a country, the people there didn't really want to feed them. So a lot of times his, his troops were starving and starving troops don't do well. So he put out a prize and said, I will give a prize to whoever can figure out how we can keep food preserved better. And guess what happened? Somebody won that prize. That was in 1795. And then in 1809, there was a French chef, Appert. And he figured out that you can put food in an airtight container, seal it, and boil it. And he didn't know it at the time, but what it does is it kills bacteria. At the time, people did not know. That doesn't come to way later on with Louis Pasteur. So he figured out you can do that. And then in 1810, somebody figured out to use the can. And then that is history because once they figured out that they could use the can and do the same process where they heat it up, they were able to take these long distances. And you know when they opened it up, it was just as fresh as when they put it in there. This is a quiet and genius. What's not ingenious is it took 50 years more before somebody figured out to make a can opener. So how did they open these cans? They took knives and hatchets and all kinds of crazy stuff. You know, people got hurt. <laughs> so today we're gonna actually use our can though, because these are really, will last you a really long time and they're very cool. You can use them for uh, putting your pencils and your scissors in. And I have all kinds and you can put anything that you want on it. So one of the reasons I really like this project is because you're able to make whatever you want, put whatever you want, use whatever kind of materials. Today, I'm just gonna show you a few. So, um, I did go to the craft store and I bought some paper a while back. And this is the result of something like that. We take patterned paper, you cut it down to the size of the can, and you can uh, put it on your can using a Mod Podge. But if you don't have Mod Podge, you can use glue. I mean, it's not really gonna make that much of a difference. What's the difference between Mod Podge and glue? It's basically that Mod Podge has a, a sealer in it that's much better than glue. But if, you, if all you have is glue, you can use glue. Add a little bit of water to it, dilute it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it on your can, take a brush, put it on your can, all over it. And then make sure that you've cut your paper to size. I, I always put mine right below the rim. And then you're just gonna make sure you have no air bubbles. And now you have a good solid thing to put stuff on. So you can paint on it, um, you can add stuff to it, like this unicorn was not on there, cut it out of a magazine and it got put on here with the Mod Podge. So this is actually two papers and you can't really tell. Um, even the little cat is cut out of a magazine and put on there. So this is a really nice little cup. Um, I didn't actually do this one, a friend of mine did it. You can also paint it. Um, I painted this one and I just used, actually what I did was I put newspaper first because I didn't want to sand it. Uh, you can avoid sanding it if you want, but if somebody scratches it, it's more likely it's going to come off. So what I did was I put newspaper and then I painted on top of the newspaper. You can also just cut out I cut out newspaper. I like using newspapers for stuff like this. Um, I cut out some newspaper and then I just did with markers, little hearts. You could do that. You could do painting, you could do writing. So you could even do, I cut a couple of things out. Like if you have pictures and you have availability to a printer and you can um, print them out like a black and white copy, you can actually take pictures of yourself. Mother's Day's coming up, did I mention that? and I know kids don't have money. So you could always take a picture of yourself and put it on one of these cups. So I really like this picture, or sometimes you don't see images that you would like to see out there. 
you find images like that, you might want to put them. So this is something I cut out of a magazine and I really liked putting with the pattern paper. But if you don't have pattern paper, you can take stuff out of magazines. You can um, create, overlap them and create your own art out of it. I found these cute little um, pumpkins and there was two kinds of papers that I liked and I took one and I cut it out and I put it on top of the other. So I'm going to take a little tape so that you can see how you could incorporate two pieces of paper. Just looking at it, you can tell that it was two different ones. So I was very careful about where I cut so that it looked like it was part of what was going on in the background. And if I were to go and I'm going to tape it up just so that you can see. Uh, look at this stuff before you actually put the glue on because if you don't like it, then you're going to have a problem. So then you have something like this and you could add to it the uh, pumpkins. Isn't that kind of silly? I like the pumpkins that were silly. I look for silly stuff. So I found like, found this crazy dinosaur. I found these wild um, figures. Although I don't know that I like to look at a figure every day that's yelling, ah, to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like the pumpkins because they're just like silly and fun. So really this lends itself to anything that you would like to do. Any materials that you'd like to do. And if you cut it too short, say that you cut it and it was too short, you oh, I think it still looks good like that. But you could always do something like take a ribbon and glue a ribbon onto it. And then it kind of adds something to it. So in art, there's never really any mistakes. There's just an opportunity to do something different. So does it work? Figure out what else you could do. What could you add? How could you change something? Could you put something on top of it? You might end up with something that you didn't even start with. That's okay. So I hope that you enjoyed this project. I hope you try it because it's really simple. Mother's Day, again, that's all kinds of stuff that you could do. Um, painting it, putting paper on it, using newspaper, using magazines. There's all kinds of opportunity to do stuff. And now you know a little bit more about the can. I'll leave you with one last thing. See all these ridges? These ridges kind of make it hard, right? When you're painting, but you can't even notice them uh, most of the time. These ridges are really important. Some engineer thought when cans get busted, when they get hit, there's a possibility the seal could break. And if the seal breaks, then bacteria can get in and then people eat it and they get sick. Sometimes they could die. So it's really important to stay sealed. Well, engineer figured out with the ridges, when it gets bumped, it's less likely to bust. So this takes some of the stress of whatever's bumping it. So now you know a little engineering, now you know a little history, now you know a little art. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you try it. This is Miss Andrea signing out.